There's a lot of things in winter that can drain your uh, battery in your EV. Uh, for example, temperature, cold battery, um, snow on the ground, uh, reduced regen, increased need for heat, all those kind of things. So um, I have noticed in the morning uh, when there's snow and also my battery is cold, I can use up to at least double the normal amount of energy, uh, sometimes triple if I'm going through snow. So I'm curious though how much energy it requires to um, heat the battery. So today I am going to so I'm going to test this by doing my usual freeway test loop. Um, nothing to do with the company test loop. And I'm going to see how much energy I use uh, over the, I think it's 24 miles or 34, I can't remember which. Um, and then, so that'll be the, the run while I'm, while I'm uh, heating up the battery. And then I'm going to do the run again uh, after the battery has already warmed, see what the difference is in energy use. And this will be freeway driving, so it would be a little bit different for um, uh, like city traffic or side roads or whatever, but we'll see what we find. You can see there's the yellow uh, dotted lines in the regen area indicating that my battery is too cold to accept too much regen. Um, I'm not at my starting point now and I'm actually trying not to heat the battery up. So I'm actually on range mode right now until I get to my starting point because range mode doesn't use as much energy to um, charge the battery. Uh, so I want the battery as cold as possible for my test, my test run. I, I can do a little bit of um, regen but not too much. It's 27 degrees Fahrenheit right now, which is, I don't know, what would that be, minus two, minus three Celsius. All right, here we go. We're at the starting point, which is the um, Cascade uh, supercharger. And um, my battery got a little bit warmer, but not too much. I'm now off of, the, whoopsies, here we go. I am off of range mode. I've got full regen. So the goal here is to drive normally and warm the battery up, see how much energy it takes. So I'm going to get on the freeway, do my usual freeway loop. Um, I will try to keep it as consistent as possible and uh, keep it at the same speed. So I've got to get around this bus here. Let's see if we can uh, uh, squeeze in here. Currently I'm at... Um, 600 watt hours per mile so <laughs> that's pretty high that's probably because we were we just did the on-ramp it's still heating the battery so I'm gonna guess probably uh, what should I guess by the end here I bet we'll be at 440 watt hours per mile well we've already gotten down to the low 430s watt hours per mile which is uh, below my initial estimate and um, so that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, we'll see how this goes. We're about, I don't know, over halfway. And um, that's not the right lane. There we go. This car does not have drive on nav, so I have to nav while it's driving. So I'm not sure how well you can see this, um, but my battery, uh, I have full regen available now, so I take that as an indication that the battery is sufficiently warm. Um, maybe that's true, maybe that's not true, I'm not sure. And I'm averaging 434 watt hours per mile. Uh, I've been able to maintain my speed pretty well, uh, be consistent, so uh, yeah, it'll be interesting. It looks like it'll be, pretty sure it'll be less than what I had anticipated. Uh, I think I said 440 watt hours per mile. Uh, probably if I was going to guess now, I bet we'll get down to about 425, mid 420s. Ha, 420 would be great. Battery energy secured. All right, onward and to the left. So here's the skinny. I almost made it to 420. It was 34 miles and we used 22.8 kilowatt hours. So, um... Yeah, I'm going to charge up a little bit. I think I was somewhere around 50 when I started the other test. I probably won't get that far, but it'll also make sure the battery is completely warm. And then we'll do leg two, which is warm battery, normal driving, well, normal autopilot driving. And then let's compare the two. 
And while we're waiting, check out the Model 3s in the area. One here, got a white one. And there's a black one over there that's just leaving. Um, yeah, good looking. Ooh, little bit of, little bit of rash here. Uh, definitely a little bit of rash there. The aero wheels, they definitely did a, did a good job on the aero wheels. Um, I don't know of any aero wheels that are uh, reasonably attractive, and these definitely are. Ooh, here's a nice shot in the sun. So, yeah. Here's the nose. I still think Model 3 nose looks a little bit small for the size of the car, but that's just me. And I'm, yes, and I'm used to the giant nose on the S. So, very sleek. I do like the white. The white is nice. All right, charged up to 60%, which is not quite as high as I was. And um, yeah, time for leg two. So battery is pretty much completely warm and I'm not changing any of my heat settings or the route or anything. So we'll see how much less energy we use. Definitely using less energy this time. I'm at 404 watt hours per mile and I expect that to go down uh, a little bit. So yeah, at least it's consistent. So I'm at home right now. Uh, I actually had made this entire video and realized that I had done the calculations wrong. So this is the end of the video with the correct calculations. <laughs> so on the first leg of the trip <clears throat> I used uh, 422 watt hours per mile <clears throat> which if you multiply that over the 34.1 miles that I drove uh, 0.422 there we go uh, that is 14.4 kilowatt hours. The uh, trip after that 13.6 kilowatt hours. I was averaging 396 watt hours per mile. So that is um, 0.8 kilowatt hours, which would be what? 800 watt hours um, to heat. Well, actually, no. So it's not that amount of energy, uh, just less than one kilowatt hour. It's That's not how much it takes to heat the pack because um, when I was driving, I was not only using extra energy to heat the pack, I was also um, losing energy by not being able to regen as much. <clears throat> so you're getting um, hit two ways, two hit. Now on the freeway, when you're cruising, you don't really use regen as much. So uh, this would actually be um, even, you would experience even more losses if you were doing like city driving, like stop and go stuff, because you have to, the more braking you would be doing, um, the more opportunities of regen you're throwing away <clears throat> until your battery warms up and you're able to um, use that completely. And that's actually kind of an interesting situation because normally electric vehicles um, kind of shine in stop and go because they're so efficient and they're not wasting electricity. Um, but on the freeway, uh, at, especially at higher speeds, you know, 70, 75, 80 miles per hour when you get like, like wind resistance starts becoming a factor, um, your energy usage starts getting up there. <clears throat> but um, in the winter, uh, if, you are, if your battery is cold and you're not able to utilize the regen um, from the city, city driving, it can really be a, a big issue. I would like to test that. Um, but it's harder to standardize the two, th the same route. So, I mean, I could do the same route, but I would be using less energy because, it, you know, you're more efficient at lower speed, so it wouldn't be quite as um, accurate. And it would be difficult to time things, like I could make, maybe I make more, the l more green lights on one run than I did on the other, so, um, <laughs> Yeah, it would just be difficult. So it's easier to do my 34-mile uh, freeway loop, which I think is, I don't know, 
it's not like super scientific, but it at least gives a good ballpark uh, estimate. The trends, the results of those, of the runs that I do seem to fit with my preconceived notions. <laughs> so I consider them accurate. Um, but anyway, that, so um, that's not a whole lot of energy. Um, 800 watt hours, so I have the 70 pack. That's, I don't know, that's like 11 or 12%. Um, no, wait, 10%. Oh wait, hold on, I can't do the math. Divided by, I probably have 65 usable. Okay, so yeah, it's a little over 1% of my um, battery pack, so that makes sense. And I haven't tested it with the 100 um, pack, uh, but it's probably, I mean, that amount of energy would be even lower, like less than 1% of a 100 pack. but maybe it uses more energy to heat that pack i don't know the other thing to keep in mind is it was 20 degree uh 29 30 degrees out right there so that's cold but that's not like super cold um and obviously like the colder it gets the more energy you need to heat the battery up and maintain that heat i've actually one time when i was driving across kansas um in one of my cross-country trips it was like 18 degrees, but there was also wind. And of course, when you're on the f on the interstate going like 80 miles an hour, you're that's creating a lot of wind anyway. So a lot of factors were cooling the battery, and the car actually even like the uh, cabin heat had trouble um, keeping up. But it was so cold that the battery I don't I don't think it like actually ever, it didn't. There were times when it didn't completely warm up. So it was like constantly using that um, energy to keep it warm. Uh, so that's not the case when it's only like 29 degrees or something like that. So the colder you get, so it's not like it's an absolute value where like, oh, you, you know, you just spend 800 watt hours, uh, and you're good. You know, depending on your conditions, you could use a lot more than that. Uh, but again, the 800 watt hours is not purely, um, battery pack heating. Uh, that also includes losses due to, um, lost regen as well. So to overcome this, um, try to have your battery finish charging overnight right before you leave so that that heat from charging um, will uh, keep your battery warm and so you don't use your, um, your energy while you're actually driving to heat your battery. Right now it's kind of difficult to time that with Tesla batteries. I know in the future we're supposed to have the ability to say like, okay, finish charging at like eight in the morning or seven in the morning or something like that. Other EVs uh, do that. It's not difficult, they just have to program it. Um, another thing is to preheat, give your car, I don't know, like half an hour of um, preheating. Um, it does charge, I mean, it does heat the battery um, and make sure you do that while it's plugged in if you're trying to maximize your range. Um, so that will help just get a head start. Um, and the other thing is if you're going on a long trip, uh, once you start supercharging regularly, that supercharging will definitely heat up your battery. Um, initially you might not be able to supercharge, uh, at max speed until the battery does warm up, but once it does, you're fine. And then, you know, that kind of preloads your battery with, um, plenty of heat. So. Yeah, I hope this was interesting. Um, I, um, yeah, I guess it's good to have uh, accurate numbers. I would like to test this with the uh, Model X as well, which is a 100D pack instead of just my 70D. We'll see what, we'll see when I can do that. It's not gonna, it's not that cold this weekend. I think it's, it's gonna be like 29 in the morning, but it's like 40s in the daytime. So that's not very interesting in terms of testing cold weather usage. Anyway, um, yeah, I hope that was interesting. If you're, actually, I don't know if the um, referral codes are still active. I do have a referral code if you're buying a Model S, X, or 3 for six months of free charging. If it's still active, <laughs> feel free to use it. I always keep that in the description. And um, yeah, questions, comments, feel free to um, put it in the uh, discussion area below. The like button is there, subscribe, and also the little bell icon for notifications when I have new videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.